Next, we'll have uh, Colleen, also from Canada, and uh, Colleen, take, take the floor. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Colleen Hardwick. I'm an urban geographer, also uh, academically, also a film producer, a serial entrepreneur, until recently uh, um, a four-year elected city councillor in the city of Vancouver. And I'm also the founder and CEO of, of PlaySpeak. And PlaySpeak was created to solve the problem of, of how to consult with people online within specific geographical boundaries in a provable way. The title of the presentation is Making It Real Online, and that is really my objective. Yes, that's me up there, and um, I have recently finished four years on Vancouver City Councilor, which was a real eye-opener. Um, as I mentioned, PlaySpeak was developed to solve the problem of how to consult with people online geospatially. Um, and when I first started down this path, uh, I was fortunate to get the support of the National Research Council of Canada IRAP program. Uh, which has continued to support our development as we've iterated the technology and, and uh, used different um, use cases. We are also, like Othello, uh, certified uh, B Corp, Social Pur Purpose Corporation, in light of our, our mission, which is, again, to make democracy real online. I also re-enrolled gr in grad school when I started on this project with Place Because my thesis topic in applied innovation. And part of that was in political science. And I took Mark Warren's grad seminar in political science to anyone that knows Mark's work in Participedia. Um, and I constructed this legitimacy framework. And for those of you that um, are Im embedded in democratic theory, popular control suggests that we elect representatives to represent us so they need to know what us think in the first place. And we need to know that you're a real person and that you're a constituent. Considered judgment means that we need to be informed and educated so that the feedback that we provide is, is actionable and civil. Inclusivity or inclusiveness, we now know that we can reach more people online than any other way. Transferability is the part that most people don't think about. When you vote, you're on a voters list, you prove it with your ID, you get your ballot and you cast your ballot in private. Well, so too, are we, should we take the same approach with, uh, if we're allowing uh, civic engagement and public consultation to be influencing our decisions? We need to know that you're a real person, that you're a constituent, and we need to protect your privacy. And we need to be transparent because seeing is believing, notwithstanding deep fakes. So this is the feedback loop. We're supposed to consult and engage with residents to gather their feedback, which is the data that should be informing our deliberation. If we're, and again, I know this is about uh, direct democracy, but we're still dealing with a, a dis different form right now, and then influence the outcomes. But the truth of the matter, and I can tell you from personal experience that those decisions, those outcomes are almost always foregone conclusions. And the consultation process is a marketing exercise designed to manufacture consent. And until we address that, we are not going to be able to solve this problem. So my analysis said, if you want to stand behind the data, and we believe in evidence-based decision-making, we need to be able to stand behind the veracity of the underlying data. So with PlaySpeak, you have to verify who you are and at the same time, we need to protect individual privacy. So I came into contact with an organization called the DIAC, the Digital Identity Authentication Council of Canada, and they had already worked on uh, ideas around online proof of residency. I expanded that out to uh, applications in citizen engagement. I was also introduced to the concept of privacy by design, and so our data architecture separates out your private information that you use to verify that you're a real person from the feedback that you provide, and that's essential. So there's me, I sign up, I verify where I live, I create a profile for myself, not unlike what you would do with your social media profiles. Once we've established where I live, then I can choose to be notified of other consultations according to my preferences, by distance, keyword, um, and frequency. I also have now the ability to be able to connect and communicate with my neighbors. And so uh, in addition to being able to um, respond to consultations at all levels of government, we're dealing with federal, provincial, regional, and local governments, so too am I able to connect with my neighbors 
And um, one of the things that we were recognized for earlier was our ability to gather that information and then shoot it back to the city um, in order to show them that there is tangible interest within specific geographical boundaries. We also modeled this after the IAP to a spectrum of participation because we need to have, uh, we need to be able to afford inform people, which is considered judgment. We need to be able to gather feedback. We have polls and surveys and we integrate multiple survey platforms. We need to be able to facilitate bi-directional communication through discussions. And I will add that when people verify themselves, they're much better behaved in discussions. Uh, we find ways for people to be collaborating in co-production tools. And finally, um, direct decision-making, which is empowerment. And the largest project we've done with the National Research Council is PlaceVote for fully encrypted place-based voting. The trick from a software engineering standpoint is to make democracy habit forming. I keep hearing this question of what do you do to get people engaged and how do you keep them going? That is really the challenge for us as, as software um, entrepreneurs and thought leaders that we need to address. And then once you got people in there, it cross-pollinates the network effect, and you're able to increase participation, which is ultimately our objective. So PlaySpeak contains um, a bunch of different tools. You can sort of see them here. Uh, they address each of the areas in the IAP2 spectrum, as I described. Um, but all of the data that is collected is dynamically geocoded. So whether we're talking polls or surveys, discussions, notice board, all these tools, when you get to the reporting stage, all of it is transparent. So all of my data is going to be sp uh, spatially segmented according to the polygons that you put on the map. But I can see most of our tools have been designed for transparency. So you can see in real time how people are responding. One of the tools that I developed was called a Centimap for spatial visualization of big text data using AI so that it, it it attributes colors from red to green to attitudes that are strongly positive to strongly negative. But transparency and trust, again, is mission critical because it's when you can see it, it makes the, the decision makers accountable. So examples of how this has played out, um, this is a one in the States in Elkhart County, Indiana, where they were um, gonna put in a 1400 unit ICE facility, Immigration Detention Center. And when news got out, social media was just a, a bloodbath of racist trolls. So they brought it on to PlaySpeak where people had to verify themselves. They geofenced it and said, only people within our boundaries can participate. And as a result, they had a very active discussion that was civil, zero trolls. And moreover, when we have tools like this is our poll tool, so not only can you see the responses with percentages, percentages and bar charts, you can also see it color-coded distributed on the map, which again speaks to transparency, which we believe that kind of visualization is really key to building confidence in the process. Uh, here's one completely different. This is the Northwest Territories, the city of Yellowknife in Northern, in Northern Canada. You can see a laundry list of all different topics that they've done there. And it, whether they're budgets or off-leash dog parks or First Nations or transit, whatever it is, they attract different audiences. But as people sign up and get into the system, then they can be non they can be notified and participate in all different consultations. And so this has addressed the concern about getting the usual suspects all the time, because we get a lot of diversity, and again cross pollinates the network effect and increases participation overall. And then last and and most recently. Um, the town of La Salle out in Ontario recently uh, did a consultation around their budget. They had a very active discussion, as most people are about budgets with inflation right now. And uh, staff had, had suggested that they bring in a budget at five, over 5%. But based on what they the feedback that they received from the public in their, uh, their uh, council meeting the week before last, they actually voted uh, to send it back to staff reflecting the will of the people and said, bring it back to us below 5% per and place speak when they went and did their council report was specifically recognized uh, for influencing that decision. My dream for this, we can make democracy real online all over the world. 
if we can authenticate people, and authentication is, is uh, an iterative process, there's no silver bullet, protect their privacy, keep them informed from all levels of government about what's going on, then we're going to give people a real sense that they can have an impact. And that's what it's all about, making it real online. Thank you.